This week, Jeff Johnston takes us to the slopes of Mount Hood in Washington State for the Adventure Van Expo, where he finds an array of off-the-road vans along with numerous displays of outdoor and camping equipment. Then, we join Michelle and Lori from Two Gals and a Boston Brood as they wrap up their installation of the new Infinity Woven Vinyl Flooring in their Lance trailer. Later, we catch up with Joe and Kate Russo from We're the Russos on their South Dakota van adventure. Also, we'll visit with Mark and Don Polk from RV Education 101 and see what they have in store for us this week. Rolling on TV is sponsored by Carefree of Colorado, celebrating over 45 years of RV awning innovation. Closed captioning, we're available, is sponsored by Forest River. Begin the journey. Today's location, the slopes of beautiful Mount Hood, Oregon. We're here to attend the Adventure Van Expo. The Adventure Van Expo is sort of an event that represents one extreme of RVing. That is to say, people who've taken Class B type motorhomes and built them into rugged, off-road, off the beaten track type adventure vehicles. Well, the Expo is a gathering of vehicles like that where they exchange ideas, look at cool new products and so on. We think it'll be a pretty fun thing to see, so come on along and let's go take a look. The Expo occupied a good portion of the parking lot at the Mount Hood Meadows Ski Area. We're here at the Adventure Van Expo at Mount Hood, and Adventure Vans are built out uh, sprinters and Mercedes vehicles that have been customized for special purposes. Um, sports, road trips, um, some people live in them. Um, and what we have today is actually uh, a show put together with probably some of the best builders um, all over the Pacific Northwest and, you know, basically from the West. We're drawing from uh, Washington and Southern California as well. An adventure van is a Class B motorhome, generally outfitted with features designed for longer-term, off-the-grid living in comfort. Many have four-wheel drive for go-anywhere capability. Spectators can learn a lot from seeing the adventure vans on display. One company on display helps new do-it-yourself type owners with van design and construction. My name is Alex. I'm here representing DIY Van. Uh, we're located in Hood River and we help people in the initial stages of their build. So they bring us an empty van, tell us the direction they want to go, and we provide the first uh, crucial steps in, uh, to get them in that direction. One is insulation and two is product support when it comes to fans, solar insulation, wiring, and that just gets them going. Um, and then they have a pretty good idea from when they stop by uh, where they want to take their their van build to the next level. The relatively small size of a van means owners need to be clever about designing an efficient but comfortable interior plus suitable exterior storage facilities. And old favorite, Volkswagen vans with camping conversions were also present at the event. It can be successfully argued that Sportsmobile was instrumental in shaping and improving the entire adventure van class of RVs. We stopped by the Sportsmobile booth where the owner, Alan Feld, has a pretty exciting new product to tell us about. This is the new Sportsmobile Classic, and we developed it over the last couple of years after Ford discontinued their Econoline in 2015. But it was such a popular truck for us that we're getting the uh, cutaway chassis from Ford, so the front end is Ford, and we're building the whole back rear half out of fiberglass and then line xing it with a Raptor liner lining on the outside. And then we're putting all our own interiors in, just like the old Sportsmobiles, but it's got our four-wheel drive system, which has the Dynatrack axle, the Atlas transfer case, and custom Fox suspension. So it's all the good stuff that we've been using in the past, but on a brand new cutaway chassis from Ford. Event attendees can learn about a wide range of specialized camping and vehicle products on display. Yeah, so what we've got here today is the uh, pop-up pit from Fireside Outdoor. This is a portable fire pit uh, that is quite unique in that it allows for having uh, open fire uh, virtually anywhere. 
It's a uh, small portable design with a proprietary stainless steel mesh that allows you to burn firewood or charcoal right on the mesh. The heat shield underneath it protects the ground or the surface that the fire is on, uh, protecting it from the fire. You could have this on a, uh, a wood deck, asphalt uh, driveway, uh, on your grass, and it just won't damage anything. It's, uh, it's excellent for uh, leave no trace and being able to have a, a fire wherever, campfire wherever you like. So today we're looking at our uh, Rad Mini. Um, this is our folding e-bike, and so really popular with the van guys um, as they can store it a little bit easier. You're gonna have a 750 watt motor in the back. That's basically gonna be two of me pedaling at full steam behind you. Um, right behind the seat here we have our battery. That's gonna give you 25 to 45 mi miles worth of riding, um, and it'll keep you at 20 miles an hour for that. Um, the coolest feature about this bike though is that it is going to fold down. Oh great. So if we switch the latch here and swing it around, we can actually break the frame and then we'll swing this around and it's got a little stand there on the bottom so it doesn't damage any of the good stuff. Mm -hmm. Pop the latch here and then it's going to fold down. That way you can tuck it right into your van or RV um, and it's going to hide away nice and neat. Very nice. My name's Tyler from Guzzle H2O, and um, what we're looking at here is our product called the Spigot Stealth, which is a onboard water filtration and purification system. It's got a carbon block filter and an LED-based uh, UV purification system, and you hook it up in your RV between the water pump and the faucet, and it uh, makes your water taste great, and it kills 99.99% .99 of any uh, microbiological hazard that might be in your water. While wandering around here at the Adventure Van Expo, guess who we ran into? Our friends, the Russos. Hey guys. Hi. So you guys enjoying the visit here? It's awesome. I mean, this is kind of like a miniature Overland Expo, but just for vans. Just for vans, yeah. Just to, it, it, it's really nice to see something with this kind of a specific uh, focused interest. Sportsmobiles got their classic. Oh, that thing is awesome. The, oh, yeah. I love the classic. I'm glad they brought it back. The texture one? The, yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. That yeah. is nice. Uh, Nomad vans. Nomad? Some really nice polished stuff. Okay, well, we'll stop on down and take a look. We're here to cover the show. So, uh, yeah. Well, good. Well, it's good to see you guys, and uh, we hope you enjoy the rest of the show. Thank, Thank you. you. Good to see right. you, too, Jeff. If serious backcountry RVing is in your plans, check out an Adventure Van Expo. To learn more about adventure style RV vans, log on to our website at rollinontv.com. Aquacam Possums, so fast and easy to use. It could seem like a game. Someone once said, the camping doesn't really start until the RV awning comes out. Whoever said that really knew what they were talking about. Carefree of Colorado, celebrating 45 years of RV awning innovation. For more information, visit our website at carefreeofcolorado.com. Jumping in, first thing we did was unscrew the threshold. And we found underneath the threshold were three lines. But there's room for the flooring, so we're good. The other moldings we took off and they had little short barbs on them. So we knew we'd have to add little longer nails. The template is simply made with craft paper and masking tape. And there it is, our template. Now we pick it up and bring it outside. Lay it on the material. I left the material out for 30 minutes. It was a bright sunny day. Let it acclimate. 
and then I rough cut to get some of that extra material away and then cut closer. Again, even though it was pretty thick, the scissors did a fine job at this point. And there it is, the cutout template. Prepping the floor can be one of the worst parts of any job like this, but it's a new floor. All I had to do was sweep it and give it a nice wash down. Now that we're into this project, I'm realizing a couple of things. I'm not as flexible as I used to be. And, um, but I'm gonna take my time and get this done, and it may be the last time I do it. But, all right, so the other thing I wanted to share is that out in the grass I was using scissors. And I thought, I can finish this off with scissors inside. But because there's no molding around most of this, you really can't use scissors. It's not gonna come out perfect. And I can see right here, it's not perfect. So I went and got the right tools, and now I'm gonna finish the job up. We use double-sided tape instead of glue. Near the front door, where the lines are, the water and electric, and I'm slipping it under because the threshold is going over here, scissors are fine. That edge isn't going to show. But where the edges show, you need to use a straight edge and a razor blade. We were pretty happy with the way it came out both into the bathroom and overall. We finished it off with molding, even in places where there was no original molding. Once the floor was done, it was time to do under our table. Laurie pulled off the top, the pedestal. So what we're doing next is we're gonna take the base of the dinette table out, um, which requires a special tip. Now most RVs, are put together using not your typical Phillips head or flat head screw. They have a square tip and most local hardware stores will have them. Just ask and let them know you're working on an RV. It would be much quicker if I use my drill. So I'm just attaching it. It slides right in and away you go. Right off. We decided to keep the back wood and we think it came out really nice. What do you think? Now Laurie puts the base back in. So we're going to line our cupboards. 12 inches by 22 inches. I cut two pieces. And because this has a nice foam back, we're going to put that base up. Let me slide this one in first doesn't need any tape because it's not going anywhere. And now we can see it's not going to go anywhere as we're driving down the road, see? <laughs> okay, now the top piece could slide out, so we want that to be stable, especially since we're going to put the vinyl down. So I put a piece of double-sided tape here. And we'll just slip that in, foam side up. And now I can put this stuff back into the cupboard. Putting this into the bottom made a really nice difference. Well, <laughs> what do you think? It's a stunning floor. I really like it. It really looks high end. Thank you to Infinity Luxury Woven Vinyl for the flooring. Thank you, Laurie, for your help. Thank you, Michelle, for your help. <laughs> Join us again on another big adventure with Rolling on TV and Laurie and Michelle. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Forest River, we not only build great RVs, we build award-winning RVs. Check out our complete product line at forestriverinc.com. Forest River, begin the journey. At Norcole, we realize that some of your favorite RV destinations are off the grid. And Norco refrigerators are uniquely designed with that RV experience in mind. We call it Freedom Unplugged. 
to learn more about our Norcol RV refrigerator line or to find a dealer near you, visit our website at norcol.com. This week, Kate and I take you on a road trip through South Dakota. Well, we made it to South Dakota, our 44th state in an RV. Well, you ready to go check out the Mammoth site? I am. Let's do it. The Mammoth site is a research facility where you can tour an active dig site of mammoth remains found in an old sinkhole. Off to our next destination. Road trip through South Dakota. If you are going to be at Mammoth site, they do have RV parking. The next stop is Wind Cave National Park where we take Charlie the Lab for a stroll. So I just talked to the ranger and they have two dog friendly nature trails at the park. Let's go to the one that's right by the visitor center here. Sure. See how the weather holds up. I keep hearing thunder. I'm gonna make some lunch and then we can get going. Let's see how this looks. Ooh, it's gonna be good. Purple potato, carrots, and kale. I think Charlie would like some of that. Thank you. So just looking at the map, and there's a section of Needles Highway that is only nine feet, 10 inches tall with the tunnel. And this is, I think, just around 11. So we can only go, let's see, yay far up to Sylvan Lake. Next stop, Custer State Park. Holy moly. Mean looking. I wouldn't want to mess with those. I don't know if we need to do this wildlife loop. <laughs> Let's just go to Mount Rushmore. Okay. After the bison jam, we take the beautiful drive up to Mount Rushmore. There it is. So you're gonna go to level four, okay? And you're gonna go on the left side where you can park your small RVs. The left side is where you want to go. Interesting. They consider a small RV less than 29 feet. All right, I'll just take this guy. Come on, Charlie. Unfortunately, no dogs past this point, so Charlie's gonna have to wait in the van while we go explore Mount Rushmore. Kate and I walked the presidential trail to see the four presidents from different vantage points. This is a good view. It's a great view. The trail is awesome and it gives you a number of different views of the presidents that you would never see from down below. Looking at it straight on, you don't get the full complexity of everything and I didn't even realize that they had kind of carved in glasses for Teddy Roosevelt. Mount Rushmore was amazing and now we're off to the Badlands. No wonder people didn't want to cross this. We're gonna go in the visitor center and watch a film. I think it's 30 minutes long. Got the AC running off of the battery in here. Yeah, so. and don't worry, we won't leave Charlie in here too long by herself just in case anything doesn't work. Well, the AC's running fine, keeping everything inside nice and cool. Charlie's happy, she's passed out. Uh, but I say we head down the road and find a trailer to take. Short but steep trail. Not recommended for people who have a fear of heights. Huh. Are you good? I'm good. All right, it's only half a mile. After our hike, Kate and I go searching for wildlife. We found them, and they're a bunch of babies. That just made my day. I love South Dakota. You love your animals. I do. We got to see bison, big horseshoe, and there's more up the road. I'm loving it here. Before we head into Sturgis, I thought we'd stop in Rapid City and check out the presidential statues. Plus, Joe can get the motorcycle off and go on his separate way and we'll 
meet somewhere in Sturgis. That's uh, George H.W. Bush. Oh. It's kind of fun to just walk up and down Main Street, check out all the presidents. Seems like there's almost one on every corner. Yeah, pretty much. So the GPS is saying it's going to take just over an hour, and I think your route's going to be about 30, 35 minutes. So. See you over there. Have a great ride. I will. I'm out here just past the town of Nemo, saw some of the camps where they do uh, a lot of the Sturgis camping and parties and things like that. So far, this has been an absolutely gorgeous ride. Next time, we head to America's first national park. Thank you guys so much for watching and thank you to Storyteller Overland for letting us borrow their prototype mode 4x4. We'll see you next time. Bye. Two great contests, two great prizes. First, we're giving away a 130 watt Go Power portable solar panel kit along with a 700 watt inverter and a 30 foot extension cord. Plus, we're also giving away a super comfortable RecPro wall hugger recliner from their famous Charles collection in your choice of colors. For additional information on the contests and how to enter, visit our website at rollingontv.com. Wow, am I glad I use AquaCam. Maybe chili wasn't the best idea. AquaCam, the most powerful odor control available and the number one seller for over 50 years. This RV driving skills segment is on your pivot point. I think it's safe to say that lots of RV accidents are a result of not understanding where the pivot point is on your RV and how it applies to making turns. Let's take a closer look. The pivot point is defined as the fixed point on a vehicle at which the vehicle rotates around in a turn. On a two axle vehicle, it is the center of the rear axle. This means that if an object, for example a tree, is located at the center of the rear axle or behind the rear axle, you can turn toward the object and not hit it. If the object is ahead of the pivot point and you turn toward the object, you will hit it. On most vehicles, you will not be able to see the rear wheels when you are driving, so you will need to establish some reference points to know where your pivot point is located when you are looking in your mirrors. Look in the mirrors towards the rear wheels and identify a spot on the side of the coach that is in relation to the center of the rear wheels. Putting a traffic cone or some other marker on the pavement to mark the center of the wheel will help locate your pivot point initially when you are looking in the mirrors. An awning arm, compartment door edge, a light, anything at or slightly behind the center of the rear wheel that you can see in your mirrors will do. Be very careful about using lights. Some manufacturers do a good job and put the side marker lights at the pivot point, but others just put lights anywhere, usually ahead of the pivot point. Once you determine where your pivot point is in the mirror, you will know when it is safe to make a turn. Well, there you have it. Understanding where your pivot point is and how it applies to making turns with the vehicle can make maneuvering your RV less stressful. This RV driving skills tip is from our Drive Your Motor Home Like a Pro DVD. Happy camping. We hope you enjoyed this week's show. And for more information on anything you saw on the show, along with additional videos, stories, and RV news, visit our website at rollingontv.com. You can also find us on Facebook, YouTube, and Vimeo. As usual, this has been another fun production.